All right, so recently I was in a conversation with some fellow colleagues, and the conversation topic was, do you use Carrie's detector die? And it got me thinking because when I was in dental school, I didn't really use it a ton. I used it some, but by the time I had graduated and then I had finished residency, I was pretty much at a point where I didn't find a use for it. And really, I was always taught that it would cause you to remove too much tooth structure. And the theory is, is that it actually stains affected dentin and infected dentin. And as we know from literature, you don't always have to remove the affected dentin. And so it could inadvertently lead to you removing the affected dentin, which could be a little overzealous in some situations. And I've seen many times too where this has just got a stigma about it in general. Many dentists don't use it because it becomes almost like a pride thing. They say, well, I know what caries looks like. I know what it looks like when I have infected caries versus affected caries. Uh, I can tell if I'm using an Explore what caries looks like. I don't need something to tell me what caries looks like. And you know, in many situations, I, I think that's kind of a ridiculous argument because you know, caries itself is a process. It's a result of cariogenic bacteria causing acid release, leading to demineralization of tooth structure. And so basically, in essence, what we're saying is, is that we can see on a microscopic level what's going on with the tooth. That's our argument. We can, we can tell what's going on on a microscopic level by using our eyes and using an instrument to determine this. I recently came across some articles that really spoke to me and really I think provide three solid reasons why we should consider using caries detector dye in your practice. All right, reason number one to use caries detector dye is because visual only and tactile only instrumentation used as a means to establish an endpoint of caries excavation is not always reliable and consistent among providers. You know, when we stain the tooth structure with a caries detector dye, we're actually staining tooth structure that has been damaged and demineralized due to cariogenic bacteria and the metabolites of that bacteria. And so it really shows us on a microscopic level what we cannot see very well with our naked eye. All right, the second reason you should consider using a caries detector dye is because it actually stains infected and affected dentin. But the key is, is understanding how to see this or read this, so to speak, when you look at the dyed dentin. There's many papers that talk about using caries detector dye. And typically when we're talking about the way it stains infected dentin, it actually creates a darker, more deeper stain than it does when it stains affected dentin. And typically affected dentin is gonna be a lighter color. It's gonna be not as pronounced as the infected dentin. Now, if you can, you really should try to remove all the caries, if possible, 100% of the time. But we do know that in many situations, we try to conserve tooth structure, and we also try to preserve the vitality of the pulp. If you decide to leave affected dentin, which is completely supported by the literature, you're actually leaving dentin that can be remineralized, and basically it can be sealed off with a good peripheral seal, and that tissue will eventually re-harden over time. And as we've discussed, in some situations, to preserve the pulp vitality, you may even have to leave infected and affected dentin over the pulp chamber to minimize the risk of a pulp exposure and potentially exacerbating a pulpal condition resulting in root canal or even extraction in some cases. The third reason you should consider using a caries detector die is because it ensures that the peripheral seal of your restoration is completely free of infected and affected dentin. Now literature has supported that you can leave affected dentin in the preparation. However, 
With bonded dentistry, we've learned that if you have a bond to sound dentin, completely void of infected or affected dentin, you're actually gonna get higher bond strengths to the tooth. And in that peripheral seal zone, that area around the periphery of your prep where you really want the best bond possible to seal off anything that you may have left inside the prep and to seal off anything that could be on the outside trying to get within the tooth. And so to get the best bond, you need to bond to sound dentin. A bond to sound dentin is around 55 megapascals. If, however, you leave affected dentin within that peripheral seal zone, you've actually reduced your bond strength to 30 megapascals. And if you unfortunately make the big mistake of leaving infected dentin within that peripheral seal zone, you've now lowered your bond strength to 15 megapascals. So to achieve the best bond in that peripheral seal zone, we need to re completely remove the infected and affected dentin, which you can easily do if you have the help of a caries detector dye. If you're interested in trying out some caries detector dye products, I want to encourage you to check out caries detector or caries finder. They will stain the infected and affected dentin, but just keep in mind that you have to know how to identify those two. Again, Infected dentin is going to be a lot more darker stain, whereas affected dentin is going to be a lighter stain. All right, so that's going to be it for this one. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and what you think about caries detector dye, if you use it, if you don't use it, and why. If you would like more information on caries detector dye and on this specific topic, I actually did a very in-depth review of this topic, and it's on ComprehensiveDentist.com. Currently right now, we're doing a one month free trial of the website. And after that free trial is over, you'll actually only pay $9.99 per month for full membership access to all the content within the website. On the website, you're gonna get access to evidence-based quarterly, which is where you're gonna find the review for this caries detector. And that's a really cool aspect of the website because basically what I do is I take articles that I read that I think are really good articles and that they're really good for the general dentist. And I basically review those and I create kind of like study slash review guides on these topics. And it's a way to support my knowledge of why I do what I do. Another aspect of the website is All Things Restorative Dentistry, where it's really an all-inclusive, in-depth sort of look at restorative dentistry. If you're a general dentist, you are the subject matter expert for restorative dentistry. There are no specialists who specialize in restorative dentistry. That is you, my friend, and you are the expert in restorative dentistry. And so it's important that you understand what you're doing. A lot of times we know how to do a procedure, but we don't always know why we do it that way. We don't understand what's the best way to do it. We don't understand the materials that we're using. And so in that specific section, we really look at why we do certain things that we do in restorative dentistry. And I guarantee you, if you go through that course, you're gonna be a subject matter expert in restorative dentistry. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for updates, and I'll see you next time.